You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to be fulfilling a request today. I got a request a while back for crab cakes. And so I looked around, looked at different recipes, and I found one that I really like because it's a restaurant recipe. I can almost guarantee that these things are gonna taste good because what professional chef would create a dish for his restaurant that didn't taste delicious? It wouldn't make any sense. And what I really like about this recipe is it uses a roasted red bell pepper sauce to go with the crab cakes. That sounds really good. I'm gonna make the sauce first because I can set that aside and reheat it later on. Then we'll make the, the crab cakes. So let's start off by making this roasted red bell pepper sauce. I have a couple of red bell peppers here. And in the meanwhile, I'm heating my oven up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 232 degrees Celsius. I like the way Gordon Ramsay showed in one of his videos how to cut up a bell pepper. He said to cut this stem piece off first and then this will be stable. Then a little off center just cut right down the side of the bell pepper so you get the red fleshy part but you leave all the seeds and that white membrane stuff inside. A nice easy clean way of cutting up a bell pepper without getting all the seeds in it. I lined a baking sheet here, a small one, with some foil. And I'm going to put some just regular cooking oil in the bottom of that. Yes, if you hear that noise, it's a plane going overhead. And I'm going to put my pepper pieces in there. There's my oven up to temperature. I'm going to put my peppers in there skin side up and I'm going to roast these as I said in a 450 degree Fahrenheit 232 Celsius oven in the upper part of the oven and I'm going to roast them for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to turn the, the, the broiler on and I'm going to try to get a little bit of charring onto the skin of these peppers. While my peppers are roasting I'm going to chop an onion here. I need about three ounces of onion, which is about 85 grams. This is a large onion, so this is way more than I need. I'm only going to use about a quarter of this onion. So I can set most of this aside. It doesn't matter how big or small these are chopped because the sauce is going to get strained afterwards anyways. So whatever is convenient. All right, there's my onion. I want you to see my peppers now that they are out of the oven. You can just see that charring beginning to happen there. That's what I want. So that it has a little bit of a smoky flavor to it. If you like a, a good smoky flavor in your sauce, you could add later on a little bit of smoked paprika. But I think this will work well. And I've got to tell you, my kitchen just has this nice aroma of roasted peppers, especially when this char started going. 
it just has this wonderful aroma. As far as how long, after 10 minutes I started poking these with a fork, they were done. As far as baking, I switched over to the broiler and it took about 5 minutes to get this char going. I'm heating a large skillet on the stove here. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of cooking olive oil in there. And there are my onions. And I'm going to saute those 8 to 10 minutes till they're tender and translucent. While my onions are cooking, I'm going to chop up a couple of basil leaves here. I bought some fresh basil and I've been keeping it in a glass with some water in the bottom to keep it fresh. And nothing has to be done fancy here because again this is going to be strained out later on anyways. So just chop that up into what's that? A julienne I guess I would call that. So there's my chopped basil. So there are my onions now. Those are tender and translucent. They even started to brown a little bit. So I'm going to add the roast peppers to those. And then I'm going to cook this for maybe a minute just to saute those peppers a little bit more. I'm going to add now about, no, exactly, one and a half cups. That's 350 milliliters of heavy cream. I'm going to raise my heat on that because that's going to have to come up to a boil. You could if you didn't want to use heavy cream. I think sour cream would be good in this. Yogurt, I think, would also work well in this. And I've got some Dijon mustard here. I'm going to put a small amount in, maybe half a teaspoon there of Dijon. Then a good pinch of salt. And I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. And then add my basil. And then bring this to a boil. Reduce the heat to low and simmer this for about five minutes. In the meantime now I let my sauce cool down a little bit and I transferred it to my food processor. And it's something I always do to make cleanup easier. Put a barrier in there of plastic. Then I don't have to wash the lid. And I want to puree this liquid until it's fairly smooth. Okay, that only took a few seconds. Ah, that looks wonderful. I want to take a little taste of that. It's got to be strained yet. Could use a little more salt, but I'm going to wait until I strain it. To strain my sauce, I set up a sieve or sifter or strainer, whatever you want to call that, over a bowl. And there is my beautiful sauce. I love the looks of this sauce. I don't know that it needs to be strained. If you puree it enough, but I might as well follow the recipe and then using my strainer I'm going to push this through using my spatula rather I'm going to push this down through the screen you can see my sauce collecting there down below so this is going to take a few minutes to push this through okay so that's it pretty much you can see there's my solids left over in my strainer and there's my sauce get all that in there so that's the sauce now for my crab cakes 
I'm ready to start making my crab cakes. This is the easy part. You basically just put all the ingredients in a bowl, mix it together, shape it into cakes, and then fry it in oil. So this part should go pretty quickly. About the only prep work I need to do is just chop up some parsley. This is Italian parsley or fat, flat leaf parsley. And I only need about half a tablespoon, so this is from about five, six sprigs of parsley. I'll chop this kind of fine and then measure off half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon rather, and that'll be my parsley. Okay, that's good enough. So there's my tablespoon. That's about half a tablespoon right there. That's it for my prep work. Into a large bowl, I'm going to be putting one pound. That's 454 grams of lump crab meat. This is super lump. It's said it's super lump. Then one large egg. And three ounces, this seems like a lot, three ounces, 80, this is 85 grams of freshly grated Parmesan or Romano cheese. I'm using Romano because that's what I have and I like. And then one clove of garlic. And I'm going to run this through a garlic press. Like so. Get out a little knife here. One clove of garlic. Two tablespoons of sour cream. That's about three or four. Two tablespoons. That should be okay. Okay, two tablespoons of sour cream. Here's my one half tablespoon of parsley chopped fresh parsley, and then finally salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to just put a good pinch of salt in there, not too much because the cheese has salt in it. And then grind some black pepper in there. And then I'm going to put a glove on and mix all this up with my hand. Whenever I'm working with something like fish, I like to wear a, a glove. This doesn't have a strong fishy odor, but just in case. And I want to see that this is okay enough to hold a shape. And that is. Okay, good. All right. Next I can start shaping my crab cakes. I have here, um, you can either use flour, one cup, five ounces, 142 grams of all-purpose flour, or in my case, I'm using one and a half cups, which is about 100 grams of panko breadcrumbs. I think the panko will give me nicer browning. And here's one thing about restaurant recipes, is they're kind of fussy about portion control. So this one says to shape each patty with three ounces of the crab meat mixture. So I have my scale set up here and zeroed out. What is three ounces? 2.6, 3.0, 2 2.9, close enough. You want to kind of roll this into a little ball and then flatten it out into a patty like so and then dredge it nicely in the breadcrumbs so it's nicely coated and then I have a tray here set aside it's lined with parchment paper so you can see what I'm going to be doing here I have been heating oil up here to about 350 degrees 
Fahrenheit. That is 177 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to very gently lower these into this pan. I don't want to crowd the pan. So I've got seven crab cakes. I'll do four. I'll transfer those to a tray that I've got lined with paper towels and I'll do my remaining three. How I would plate one of these, and now I know why these are called Italian crab cakes. It's because of the Romano or Parmesan cheese inside. I did warm up my sauce here in the microwave. Spoon a little bit onto the crab cake and put the rest on the plate. And that is an Italian crab cake. <laughs> and now to see what my crab cake tastes like. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's going to be good because it's got a lot of crab meat in it. Get some sauce on there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is very good. Those two flavors, the crab cake and it, the crab cake itself is so delicious, but add that sauce to it. Oh yeah. That is very good. So excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my Italian crab cake with roasted red bell pepper sauce. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.